Welcome! Are you ready for lesson one? Today we're going to discuss very basic behaviors all puppies should have as their foundation for good manners. We're going to work on sit, down, and come. What I want you to keep in mind is a couple very simple rules to keep you going through all your training. The first rule, instead of talking to the dog all the time, to teach them something, I want you to show them first without saying anything. After you do that, maybe about five, ten times and the dog is getting the idea of what they should be doing with their body, then you're going to put the word to it as the puppy is doing the behavior that you're looking for. After that, we're going to say the word beforehand to see if the dog understands the concept, and then we're going to change the environment. So let's get started. So for example, I'm going to teach Xander here how to do a sit. The easiest way is to lure the dog, and usually food or toys is a great way to do that. Your puppy should be somewhat hungry, but not so hungry that they can't even think straight to work for you. Also, if you have a, an exuberant puppy, a little bit of light exercise could help you get started nicely. Now, I'm going to show Xander what I want him to do in the sit by just motioning um, him into that position. I'm going to use food. Eventually we're going to do what is called fading the lure. The food is considered a lure. Eventually we have to get rid of this so that the dog doesn't get into the habit of only performing a behavior for you when there's food present and in sight. We don't want that to happen. But to teach the dog it's helpful to get started right there. We're going to have the food right at the nose. Keep it tethered. Pretend there's like a, a one inch uh, piece of string tied from the treat to the nose. And you don't want to go any further away than that. Now say this was Xander's nose. I'm going to have my treat right here. I'm going to put push up over the back so hopefully his nose will follow and his hiney will go down and hit the floor. Once his hiney hits the floor, I release the treat. Not saying anything these first few times, okay? So let's get started. So here we have our puppy. He's in standing right now. I have the treat tethered to his nose. Now your puppy may do all kinds of things like grab your hand with the paw and that sort of thing. We're not going to worry about any of that right now. We're just going to get them started into the sit. So here I have the treat tethered right there. I'm going to push up over his back. And when the hiney hits the floor, I release the treat. So let's do that again. And I'm not saying any words to him right now. Of course, I'm talking to you, but I'm not saying the cue for him. So we'll bring him up a little closer. Again, it's tethered to the nose. I push back and release right as he sits. And again, we're going to do it about five to ten times without any words. I just put that treat right in the mouth as the hiney goes down. Now, let's say I've done this about 10 times with him. Now I'm going to say the word sit, not beforehand, only as his bum actually touches the floor. So I don't want you to watch the face. I actually want you to watch the back end there. So you're looking at the back legs and the hiney area, and when you see it hit the floor, say the word sit and release that treat at the same time. Okay, so let's do that. Here we are. Now if you notice, each time we do that, he's laying down and relaxing. So instead of saying more words to him, I'm just kind of motioning him to get him back up so I can start it all over again. And he's a lazy puppy, so I have to keep encouraging him to get up. Sit. Good job. Good job. So now what I'm going to do, let's say we've done that about 10 times, is he's getting the idea of it. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add both a hint and or a verbal cue in there 
to get him into the idea that that's what I need you to do. Now sit is typically like this. That's going to be your sit cue. And it's actually very easy because you can put the treat in your hand and it's almost there. You can even tuck it into, thank you, you can even tuck it into your your fingers like this so he can see the treat down under here okay and of course we have all the normal puppy biting and all this here what another thing I want you to keep in mind is when you're teaching your puppy yeah we absolutely want to work on bite inhibition but I'm not doing that now so I'm not going to correct my puppy or do anything else because I'm just working on sit so in order to keep him from biting me while I'm speaking to you I'm just taking his mouth off, redirecting him, pushing him the other way so he can see something else. You can even toss a treat on the floor to redirect him until you're set up and ready to go again. Good job! Alright, so now let's add the hand signal for sit and the cue at the same time. So I get him back into the stand position. I have it right there. And if he jumps up, you just start over. Sit! Now that time my hand was a little further back, but that's only because he, he backed up a little. But I want to make sure he still gets the reward. It's just as important, even if it's not perfect. Sit. Good, just like that. And practice that several times. As you can see, he's a little jumpy. He's a little wound up, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a quick break and I'm going to go get a toy so I'm not battling all this puppy biting and stuff, okay? Because obviously he needs a little mental break. So I'm going to go grab a toy, play with him, and we'll be right back to work on some downs. Okay. So we're back. I have a toy here. Before we start the downs, I forgot to mention one thing. You want to practice that sit um, by doing the cue beforehand to see if your puppy understands it. So in a second after he plays, I'll show you what I'm talking about. But basically, I'm going to kind of stand up also. You want to start getting some distance away from your puppy um, so you don't always have to be down right in here uh, working with them. And I'm going to say sit as I give the cue. And hopefully, if I've been doing this correctly and, and practiced it enough times, he's going to understand what I'm looking for. And then after that, that's when we're going to uh, fade the lure, which means getting the treat out of the hand. The dog will still get the treat, but only after they perform the behavior. So we're going to practice that one second after we get this play going here. And by the way, playing with your puppy is a great way to build a bond. Just some nice light tugging. You can let your puppy win the tug sometime. Be careful so you don't you know, pull their bodies too hard. They are growing. But this is a great way to keep the teeth on something they should be doing, not on your arms, not on your hands. Redirects them. Let them have some fun. All right, so here we are. We're going to practice it just with the cues and see if he understands. Ready? nothing about that because I wasn't worried about it right now. I'm just working on the sit. Okay, we'll work on the other stuff later. So let's try that again. Get his attention. Sit. And I do actually have the treat in my hand because he's still being a little wild. So you can always adjust your training program as you need it. Now I'm going to try nothing in the hand. I have it ready to reward him with, but he's not going to get it while we're working. nothing in my hand as I was showing him the cue. Now, one thing you have to keep in mind is that in order for a puppy, hold on, let me get a toy because we got this crazy stuff going on here. Let me get a toy. For a dog to truly understand a concept, they need to repeat it about a hundred times in different situations and environment. 
Now, an environment means change of scenery or change of person. So if I had somebody else coming in here, like my husband, to uh, work on a sit with him, he would have to start all over, just like I did with you from the very beginning of this video. He would need to start it by uh, just getting him in the motion, releasing the treat, do it like that several times, then adding the word as the puppy is doing it, and so forth and, and so on. You have to do that every time you change an environment so the dog really understands the concept. Because a lot of times we get people who say, well, my puppy sits great at home in the kitchen. When I say sit, they're on it. But if I take them outside, all bets are off. It's because you need to practice in all those new places so the dog really, truly understands that sit means sit. All right, so let's move on to down. Now, a down can start out with the puppy in a sitting position, a standing position. It does not matter. We just need to get them in a starting position. Let's follow the same rules. We're going to show the dog, then, then say the word as the dog is doing the behavior, and so on, because we're starting something new. Now, remember how I said to teach only one thing at a time. So I'm not going to say sit uh, or stand to him. I'm just going to get him in the position, because I'm only teaching down right now. So here he, he's in a sit right now. I got the treat. I'm going to tether to that nose. I'm going to go straight down to the floor, keep it close into the shoulders, and release the treat as he goes down. Let's do that again because we've got to keep practicing. Let's move back here so you can see him a little bit. There we go. So right now, he's, we're going to try it from a standing position. I have the treat tethered, pushing in, and release it when I see an elbow or back leg go down. So let's pretend we practice that with no words. Uh, about five to ten times. Now I'm going to say down when I see an elbow or chest start. It doesn't have to be perfection to start. One little elbow hitting that floor counts. So, oh, good job. I'm going to just give it to him because he, he did the behavior. We're just going to be, give it a freebie. So let's get him back up. All right, now here we go. Tether to the nose, straight down, and release. Good. Down. Back up just by motioning him into a up position. Down. Good. Now let's say I practice it that way about five to ten times. Now I'm going to start standing up a little bit. Now the cue for down can just simply be like this. But I'm going to start off by keeping the food in my hand. There we go. Good. Here we are. Down. Now, this time I'm going to try it without any food. The food will come after he does it, so I'll get it ready and in my opposite hand. He's going for a drink. He'll be back. And the reason I don't want you to um, say sit or stand to start, and you should try the down from either position, is because sometimes you might want the dog to go from a down to a stand or a down from a sit. Like say you were doing agility work and you send the dog going to the agility table, if you can do a fast down from a standing position, you're, you're counting off your seconds. Down. Okay, we'll do that again. Treat is in the opposite hand. I know you can't see my head, but that's okay. It's not important. Bring it over to me. Down. Another important thing I want you to remember is to not repeat your commands. So say you thought your dog really understood the concept and you sit down um, and your dog swipes at you and does all this other stuff. Don't repeat. Wait them out. Let them think. If they still seem like they're not getting the concept, take a breather for a couple seconds, walk away, come back and do it again. But if you get into the habit of repeating those cues, your dog is like, well, I think I can wait till she says it about five times before I actually do it. And that we don't want. All right. So let's work on comes next. This is actually a very fun thing to do with your dog because it involves play. And so often, uh, the, the, the comment from people is that my dog does not have a reliable recall. A couple things can happen. Either you expect it too much from your dog too soon, you've asked them to come to you from too far away without actually practicing the behavior, you didn't include play with it, 
Um, or you yelled at your dog when you asked them to come. So all, all that could be contributing factors. So the concept with teaching a nice, reliable recall, which is the come, is to start off with play. Make sure you have it set up so that you can control the fact that your dog might actually come to you. If you can't control the environment, your dog has the opportunity to go, oh, something over there, let me go check it out, why they were coming toward you. That we don't want. So in order to control the environment, there's a couple things you can do. Use a small room in your home, like a bathroom, nice and narrow so there's not too many distractions from side to side. Put a leash on your dog. One thing I want you to keep in mind, hold on, let me get a toy. <laughs> what are you doing? It's getting away. Come on. Good job. Good job. Good job. Teaching the re recall is to only say the word come when your dog is actively looking at you, engaged, and running towards you with no chance of failure on your part, uh, meaning the dog doesn't get distracted and go from side to side. So <laughs> we're going to use, instead of food, because he's really enjoying this toy, I'm going to use this. Uh, very simple. I'm going to start close in. I'm going to have the toy. Now, I'm going to bend down. I'm going to be very animated. I'm going to back up. So it's fun. It looks fun to the dog, and the chances of him coming toward me are pretty good. So once I think I have that all set up, I'm going to say come as he's running to me, and then release the toy when he gets there, okay? So we'll practice that a few times. When you're teaching the dog come, this is one of those times where you can actually use the word as the dog is doing it instead of practicing it one thing at a time like I explained earlier. It's because we, the dog is actively engaged in the behavior. So we can go ahead and throw that word right in there. Alright, so let's get him up. Now, I'm going to start him back here. And again, there's jumping involved. I don't care about the jumping because I'm only working on come. So he sees the toy. He wants the toy. Now, I'm going to back up. Come. Give him the toy. Play a little bit. Good job. Good job. And again. And take it. Last. And you could do this with two people in your home, uh, one person at one end of the hallway, the other person at the other end, have toys or food, uh, that sort of thing, and just have a great time with it. Then as your puppy gets good at it, you can start extending the length and whatnot. Now, the next thing, very, very important, is collar grabs. Has anyone ever seen a, a dog in a dog park or gotten loose on a walk? and the owner tries to go and grab the dog and they grab the collar to get control so they don't lose their dog. And the dog either sees the hand coming in, they're like, oh no, and they start running away even faster, or they act adversely, like get off of me, and they turn around to a half snap or a half growl. That's because the dog wasn't sensitized to that feeling. This right here, this area on the dog's neck is, is kind of a defensive area sometimes for some dogs. They don't like that sensation of the hand coming in. So we need to get them used to that will be restrained at some point in their life, either by you or like by a veterinarian or a groomer that has to handle them. Um, so we need to get them used to that. He's loving this toy, so I'm going to use the toy right now to do that. So all I'm going to do is I take the toy, I have it. Now, I'm going to give him the toy the same time I grab that collar. So we're having some collar grabs and some play in there at the same time. And I take the toy back, good job, give him the toy. Grab the collar so he feels that that's a fun thing. That sensation around the neck means some playtime. And again, come, there you go. And again, right in there. Yay! Yay! Good job. And then release. Okay, good job. Good job.